There we go. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay, so we preheat our oven to 180 degree, uh, degrees and we're going to put 700 grams of milk in. And I'm doing this upside down, so I might add a little bit extra, but everyone knows when I cook, it's um, it can be a bit wonky. Six, seven, C. No, oh, Sandra, 317. Were the scales on zero? Well, no, it should be right because it's up to the litre mark. Oh, okay. So it's not yeah. quite up to the litre mark yet. <laughs> <laughs> My first flop. No, I don't think that would work. No. Can I repour? <laughs> just to make sure. We don't want to stuff up our custard. No, it's right. It's right? Yeah, it's right. It's just under the litre mark, so it's good. Yeah, well, that's what I reckon too. So yeah. you get 620, so we'll put another 80 in. It goes to show you us consultants make mistakes too. And 701. And Perfect. next. And the four egg yolks go in. Large eggs. And the maize flour, we all know, we've all discovered it's some um, icing sugar, uh, corn flour, sorry. Um, so 60 grams. And that's like three tablespoons if you're like me and just gauge. 56 and 61. Eggs and 120 of sugar. I'm assuming Sandra's weighed this right, so I'm just going to tip it in. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, and half of them love these, so I just go squirt, 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 and more vanilla, the more better. <laughs> you don't measure that. <laughs> so it says half a vanilla pod, but we're just using the vanilla bean and the paste. lemon zest. Yeah. Um, So you can zest the lemon in the Thermomix. We just used a lemon zester to be quicker. Okay. You could have done that beforehand and then thrown in all your ingredients. So to zest lemon is probably on speed seven for about three, four seconds. Yeah, it doesn't take long at all. Yeah. So there we go. So we're doing it eight minutes and we'll go, It'll tell me when to stop. There you go. That's what I love about this. It just stops when you uh, get there. We'll move this out of the way. Okay, so whilst that's cooking, Claire, uh, Claire, oh my gosh, Helen is going to get the, the, the phyllo pastry ready. And whilst that's happening, I'm going to start on the prawn saganaki. Okay, so I'll just bring this when we mix around. So this is such a great dish to have. Well, I want to show the story, Sandra. Sorry, yeah. I'm a bit pushy sometimes. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, I have to deal with six grandsons. <laughs> Right, so, uh, scissors for this. Um, so with the filo pastry now, uh, the, the instructions aren't really clear on how you um, layer them. So we've, we've been experimenting. When I made mine last week, I folded them over because I used a square dish. Sandra last night cut them. So we're going to do it a different way this time. And we're also going to use... Um, eight sheets instead of six because when we found it was really not enough filo pastry for us Greeks we like it so and it says to layer it across and overlap it so we push it down and grease so, so we're using ghee so I made this ghee yesterday and it's a recipe that you can get from cookie do but basically it's cooking butter for two hours and, um, and it, so it separates those milk solids and then you strain it and you end up with this beautiful ghee. Um, 500 grams of, of butter to do the ghee. Um, so if, if, if you're gonna buy ghee, it's actually quite expensive. Um, this was just your plain old butter and you cook it and, um, and yeah, and it's, it's done, it's ready. So the, the, the recipe actually says to do it with butter. butter. 
But we're using ghee because we just just it gives it more flavour. It gives it, it a nutty does. taste. It, yeah, nutty flavour. Uh, yeah, and I think that's what. So in the thing it says to overlap. So what we basically do is go over the yeah, sheets. Right? Yeah. So that oh. you go triangle, triangle, triangle. So you end up with heaps more yeah. pastry than what I did yeah. in the other one. Yeah. Yeah, because you you you're supposed to go um, just move across around the next around. sheet will go and then you just you know, that. So yeah. I'll just keep layering till I get my eight sheets in. Okay. So oh. basically you just keep doing that and keep brushing it with ghee. Yeah, each with layer. Every single layer. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start our prawn feta. So the first thing we're going to do, sorry, yeah, prawn second egg here. Uh, I also make some little changes to this recipe, which I'll, I'll go through with you. So some brown onion. And I'm also going to add garlic, because as I'm Portuguese, you cannot have prawns without garlic, guys. <laughs> Two garlic cloves, very big garlic cloves in there. That was the first thing I picked up when I made yeah. it. It definitely needs the, the garlic. And let me just grab this measure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, nice, yeah, found it. Oh. All right, and we're gonna chop that three minutes, three seconds on speed, seven. Okay, and the, the obvious step next is we're gonna saute that. So if you haven't seen a, seen a thermomix in action yet, but I think you're, you're all only one today. Um, three seconds speed seven to chop onion and garlic. That still blows my mind. And I've had a thermomix for eight years. It's crazy. Did Jim? you have the tin of 31? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, that's, that, <laughs> we're yeah. spoiled now. I know. So do you remember how it was before thermomix having to chop up onion and garlic mm -hmm. every time you made a dish? Yeah. Because it's the beginning of so many dishes, isn't it? And it's just... Oh, and if you didn't do it by hand, you had to get something else to chop it. And then you had to wash that as well. Do you and you were crying. Prehistoric days before Thermomix. <laughs> we were crying. Oh, crying. Yeah, I used to get the goggles out. <laughs> I, I actually used to put goggles on so I wouldn't cry. All right, 50 grams of olive oil. And we're just going to saute that for two minutes. On speed one. Well, we'll be finished pretty much. This is three minutes to go on this one. Oh, this awesome. is a this is a really nice custard. Um, the other one that I've tried is with the semolina. Mm. Um, but I, when I served it up to Chris the other day, he didn't say, oh, it should have been done with the semolina, so I passed the Chris test. Passed the, Chris is the hubby. <laughs> so. so if it passes the Chris test, we just say on your prawns, yeah, we did it as an entree, guys, you should have just done it as a main meal and just some bread and, oh, my God. <laughs> I should have got some bread for you. Beautiful. Um, so and another great recipe, which is very similar to this um, bugasa, is the galaka bureko that you can get on our list for community. I said it good. You said it so good. Oh, galaka bureko. Yeah. Oh, I actually, it's something. It, it's it sounds sexy. Like <laughs> um, yeah, it's a recipe by George Columbaris, and I had the privilege of a Zoom session with him where he showed us how to make the. Uh, the, his um, famous Galacta Boreco, and you can see it on Recipe Community. So just Google Galacta Boreco by George Kambaras. I'll actually post a link to that recipe as well. That recipe, the uh, custard is made with semolina, and um, it's just absolutely divine as well. And he also, part of the recipe, he makes the licorice ice cream to go with mm. the Galacta Boreco, and he also does a saffron sugar glaze as well for to top the um the the galacta bureko so mm. so yeah that is a really really good recipe as well i love how this is falling over so, yeah so i'm gonna i think i'm nearly there i'll just fold yeah. it over and then the custard will just go because honestly like the more filler you have the nicer the nicer it is because you get that really nice crunch with the soft custard um oh yeah there. and it, it softens up over so then well, I'll leave it like that to get the custard, yeah. So we'll need, um, oh, you're done. you're done. Yeah, so that's done here. Now I'm just going to add 400, so just a can of um, diced tomatoes. Okay. So any old. It smells good already, just go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and teaspoon of sugar. So the sugar is, is um, it is important because it just cuts the acidity out of that um, 
the tomato, yeah, yeah, the other, yeah. It, the tomato, because this is such a quick dish, it's not, you know, a slow cook dish, so that acidity is going to be there, and so the teaspoon of sugar helps that. I think it makes a difference to the recipe too, like when I've added sugar and I haven't, it, it just makes it so much nicer. And that, as they say, you add sugar, it's addictive, so yes, it's only yeah. a teaspoon, so. Yeah, we'll just put a bit more so and now 200 grams of water i actually add a, just under 200 so i like that sauce a little bit thicker i don't know about you yeah, yeah. um so i've, I've put only 170 it's not a, a big difference uh the salt yes. and you can even put um the same amount of liquid if you're going to increase your so we're using 25 prawns today yeah yeah. Um, I've done it with two kilos where I've put them on in the Varoma. Oh, okay. So the sauce yeah. is the right amount, like it's a good amount for even if you do one kilo or two kilos of prawns. Okay, so I'm going to go here now. Okay, so now just some pepper. I'll just get this cooking and then we can. I do like a lot of pepper and I also like chili in this as well. So um, this is a mishmash of Portuguese and um, and Greek because I had the Portuguese peri peri that that we make. <laughs> well, that'd be nice. Yeah. It's really nice. Like, this... I actually should post that recipe. It's one of my husband's recipes, and it's just absolutely delicious. But that's what I like. It. I mean, everyone thinks you have to follow a recipe as it is on Cookie Do. You don't have to. You change it around to suit you. For sure. And your family. So. Okay. All right, so I added two teaspoons of oregano. Now we're going to add some fresh mint. So it says five five leaves, roughly. So there's a nice big leaves from, from my garden. I like mint, so I'll just mm, add a bit good. more. And we're going to now cook that for 15 minutes. Okay. All right. So this one over here now tells me we're going to start on the... Um, I think it's the syrup next, isn't it? On this one? Did you do it last uh, night? That one is for the now this oh, is for, for, right. for the butter, yeah, which okay. we've so we've already done, so we can skip a few steps. Um, and you all know how to change and go back to the recipe here details. And what we can actually do is move on. Um, we've done that. So now Helen's just pouring the custard there. And yeah, we're just going to put, yeah, I'm just going to show them, but if they don't know how to find the recipe on here. Yeah. Um, so, in, so you can skip steps. Um, you can actually just tap on that and it'll move it to that part of the um, recipe that you want to get to. So we just pour this in here. And this is the custard. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So look how nice and creamy that is. And how many are using the pre-clean mode? Do you love the pre-clean mode on the, when you finish the custard? Because we're going to make the syrup after this. So we don't yeah. have to fuss because there's actually no caramel. It doesn't stick. Our custards don't stick to your bowl like they do in the saucepan. No, oh, that's really nice. That's really oh, that's good. good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now I've done that. Um, and what I like to do is do actually the, um, I won't do it, it'll make noise now, I'll do the pre cream afterwards. So what we do is um, I can actually fold these over now and I'll butter them and then I'll put another, actually I won't, I'll only put the six on top now. Okay. Because yeah. it's got all this yeah. on there. It looks amazing. So far so good, there it is. And I'll just oil that, butter it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Careful that tray is hot. Yep. Chris thinks he's on cloud and I now he can get all these um, Greek recipes on cookie do. Because I don't have, to, well, I wasn't cooking them in the soup. Cool. Sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, can't wait for the new kitchen. Oh, nice. And when I finish this, I'll actually show you, you can actually do this as an individual servings. Um, 
by rolling each filo pastry with a, a teaspoon of custard in it and baking it in the oven for about 15 minutes. Yeah. And I love doing that when we're going visiting because our friends are so impressed if they get to the laksa, which is not usually done during the week or... Mm. It is such an impressive dish to take with you, isn't it? And oh. it as you can see, like, it's not it's not difficult to make at all. No. I was quite surprised how, how easy it is to make... I mean, some people are... or a galata bureku. <laughs> Some people are very dainty and worry about the filo pasty breaking, but when it's cooked and baked and served up, you can't see where it's torn. Or, yeah. Um, ah! There we go. And I actually, um, there's another version you can do too. You can actually preheat, uh, line your filo pastry. Um, with ghee, like spread the ghee on and put them on trays, um, seven seven on each tray, put it in the oven to get crispy. And that's in the basic book of cookie do, at uh, Thermomix, I should say. My bread's going in the oven. So it was proving one of these from, from the mix shop. They're really good. You just get a really nice design on, on the bread. So this is the, just a basic bread rolls recipe. Um, and I divide it into two. So I have two, two little loaves instead of one big one. Yeah. Sorry, I was saying, yeah, you can bake your individual sheets seven on one tray and seven on the other, and then you um, break them up. The one tray you break up on the bottom of your baking dish, pour your custard on, and then break the rest of the filo pastry on top. Um, and that's another impressive way of taking it to people because I think you've gone to a lot of effort. You yeah. <laughs> have That's why I said it's such an impressive dish. Yeah, you know, I've seen um, I've seen the making of filo pastry, mm. and it's just so amazing how they do it. So I My saw it in each sheet. No, well, what? this was actually in uh, in Portugal yeah. in a, a factory where they oh. make um, you know your traditional uh, desserts. We've got one where it's uh, it's like a an almond paste wrapped in filo. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh! Yeah. I'm actually what. Because I'm going to have filo left over. It's something I'm going to make this weekend. Anyway, so in this big, massive room, like super clean, sterilized room, you have people all around the room just doing this with the pastry and just so it stretches out. Like it's, it's crazy how they do it. It was on the um, uh, show with Matt Moran and Maggie Beer. It was okay. a baking bake off, the Great Australian Bake Off. Okay, yeah. Now they had girls there in one of the series where they actually rolled it and used the tablecloth to yeah, stretch it. Yeah, it's they, amazing. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's really interesting. When I, when I open up a packet of filo pastry, I think of the work that's gone mm. into making this pastry. Well, I had a customer that wanted to make his own wonton wrappers because he wanted to see. It took him four yeah. hours, but now he appreciates the shop bought ones because. A lot of work goes into mm. that sort of stuff when you're making your Chinese and stuff. So I think I've got five here. One, two, three, four, yeah, five. So I just put one more on there. And this will basically be ready to go in the oven. So when I'm cooking with the rose gold ah. baking tins, I normally ah. yeah, Bobby. check it five minutes before, put it for five minutes less okay. because I find they get really hot. And um, I can always cut down on the cooking time. So I think this one, um, it's about, um, 25, 30 minutes. So I think that when I made it last week, I cooked it for 20 minutes and checked it. Because uh, your oven, of course, is going to be different. And each person uses different baking tins. So always check it. And I know with these rose gold, you need five minutes less, pretty much. So that's the last sheet to go on. We fold them over. This is then, and then we'll, okay, I'll put some in between. Yeah. Can never have enough butter or ghee. No. <laughs> It does give it more flavour because I did one lot without geeing or buttering and it was flavourless. Yeah, for sure. 
Does he think, oh, you know, all that butter, but you're sacrificing flavour and we only live once. And we only eat it. We don't eat it every day. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. if you're going to make a dessert which is full of calories anyway, just go all the way. Let's have a few more calories. <laughs> Well, uh, now I've promised um, my gym buddies that I, because uh, I don't, I, we don't, we eat it one or two days and then it sits there. Yeah. Um, so now I'm just take it and give it to everybody. Oh. That looks amazing. It looks That's, the same as yours. I think yours will be, pretty. this one will be better because it's got heaps more filling. And I think I probably maybe went over, because I can't use these silicon ones. I've put too much. You can't use what? The silicon. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have to get the mix shop on. The mix shop has some really exactly. awesome mm -hmm. brushes. Uh, last time I tried oil, they were out of stock. So okay. it's definitely on my There it list. is, ready to go in the oven. Okay. 100 degrees. Let me try it for 20 minutes. Did yours take? Is that what it takes, 20 minutes? It says 25 to 30. Okay. Oh, did, how long did yours take last time? 40. Oh, okay. Well, no, I'll check it at 25. Each oven is different. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so what else? Just every much we got five minutes. Okay, so to do an individual, I'll just show you. I won't actually do it, but to do an individual, here's your filo pastry. There you can see. You gear it. You fold it up that way. Fold it down that way, and then you put a teaspoon of custard in the middle. Um, sorry, wrong instructions, Helen. Halve it. Trying to picture my okay. picture I have in my book. You have it. You put your um, teaspoon of custard in the middle, in the and middle? then you yeah here? you know here oh here okay. yeah there yeah. and then you fold this way and this way yeah and you roll up this way lightly. Oh. Um, I've made it a little bit small. It usually comes out about that big. Mm. Um, Actually, this will be good for my dessert I'm making Sunday. Yeah, so um, you, you, almond. You just make it neat. So they're about that size. Yeah. Yeah. So then you fold it up this way and then you bake them and you keep an eye on it because you don't want them bursting. They can burst. And do you just um, put the ghee on the outside? Or no, you... I would have geared it. Oh, okay. I'm just doing it so you can, yeah, in the middle. Yeah. You gear it again. Yeah. Um, and then you, that goes on your baking tray. That yeah. looks messy, but funny thing is when you bake anything, like eaten, bread can be look, bread can look, Rustic, you stick it in the oven, it turns out perfect. Yeah, I don't like to use the word messy, I think mean, it's rustic. No, rustic, rustic is great, yeah, <laughs> no. So that for sure, yeah. and then you just sprinkle the icing sugar and that cinnamon on top. Um, when you're serving them, I actually froze them, uh -huh. took them where I was going, and I didn't even have time to dust them because they were eating them as they came, as out, they of the came oven. out of the oven. Oh, delicious. Yum, so that's um, all right. So you're gonna eat your sunny and lucky prawns with the bread you're making? Yes, mm. yeah, so that'll be ready soon. It's rising nicely. Um, I'm gonna show you the, the prawns. So these were these were frozen prawns. And frozen prawns have uh, quite a bit of water content as well. So you've just gotta be careful with that because the dishes can come out runny if you're using frozen prawns. So I let it defrost on some baking paper and that way it is this baking paper uh kitchen paper kitchen towel and uh, and that just absorbs the the water that comes out of those prawns so hopefully then your dish won't be too runny um these are yeah so i've just got 24 prawns but like helen was saying you could you could easily add more to this recipe because it makes quite quite a bit of sauce but that's not a bad thing because you're going to clean up that sauce with, a, with, with some bread so make sure you've got some crusty fresh bread ready to go because uh, you will want that with this dish and that's going to be our lunch today so all right so there's just only a couple of minutes to go well, i'll around. make some noise while i clean this so we can get the syrup going too oh okay yeah awesome so, so we'll just uh, universal speed yeah um, so if you haven't seen the cleaning function yet it's really cool pretty clean here um and we'll just one, two, which I always forget to make sure everything's on there. And what I love, it actually calculates. Why isn't it working? It is. It is. Yeah, Sorry, there's noise over there. You can't hear it, but yeah, it started. I love it that it calculates, like it's telling us we've got eight minutes. 
but it drops down to like three or four minutes by itself because it's worked out how hot the bowl is, it's worked out um, how much water there's in there. So it can drop down quite quickly. Um, I heard it even calculates how dirty that bowl is. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. The technology is just mind-blowing. That's what I am. Um, yeah. It's amazing. And I had a... Uh, so if you haven't done the new software update yet, on the team, on the... Um, on this machine, they've um, optimized this function here, so you're able to see as you're turning the dial where you're, what you're choosing. Whereas before, you had to turn the dial to see the mode that you wanted. So people look at that for that software update. Get it done. Yeah. So another great advantage of having the um, your Thermomix connected to to Cookie and to your Wi-Fi is you get these awesome software updates. So cool. So your Thermomix is always up to date. And the beauty of it is that they can always add new modes, new functions through software updates. So cool. And how many have personalized their profile on Cookie Do? Has yes. anyone got any questions on that one? Well, I think we have a few couple of questions here in the chat. Let me have a look. Are you recording it, Sandra? I, I am now. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I will be running a, um, a cookie do workshop. I haven't done one of those in a while. Um, so it'll be a Zoom session. You can hop on. It's half an hour, but you can um, learn about all the different functions um, on, on cookie do to help you with your searches. So you come up with different recipes. Um, well, I love the filters that we can keep Australia, UK, USA, and uh, every other country that we want on there now. It's <laughs> good, isn't it? Oh, there we go. There you go. See, it's dropped down to five minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the new filters are amazing. So you can set it so it searches English recipes all over the world, so not just Australia now. Mm. You can set it to if you're vegan, vegetarian, you're a, um, a, a creative cook, you can set it to that so those sort of recipes pop up for you. All right, so we're ready for our next step here. The, Do you want me to turn it off? Yeah, can we do? This is there you nice. go, sorry. Okay, so now we're going to insert the simmering basket. So that's quite hot. So because that was cooking on, I think, speed three or four, it's blended that sauce to, um, so, well, there's no tomato chunks anymore. Can I just get the simmering basket? There's no more what? Chunks of, um, what do you call it, tomato? Yeah. You could even use fresh tomato if you wanted for this. So we had an abundance of fresh tomato. So simmering basket. Dirty. And the 24 medium prawns. Uh, it's funny how they say it's 24. I think I've got 25. Yeah. That's oh, fine. Three, Look, as long as it fits in the simmering basket, you can put as many as you want. And there's plenty of salt, so it fits. I actually didn't weigh, oops, didn't weigh these, so it's good. And, and now we're just going, so it actually steams those prawns. So it really keeps that, that flavor in, but all those juices just fall into the sauce anyway. So five minutes on speed, speed three, and then it's done. So whilst that's happening, I am going, oops, sorry. <laughs> oh, come on, how many don't do that at home? How many of these cooks? No, I always say I am the messiest cook on the planet. I, I, I actually sometimes should take a photo of what my kitchen looks like with three thermomixes sometimes on the bench. You've got three children, you've got a husband, you've got a mother and father. Hello. Oh my gosh. And a dog and a cat. Yes, and a couple of birds and some chickens. Yeah, so hello. <laughs> it All right. to have an ideal home. Okay, so I'll just crumb my feta. So I've been looking at a few um, cheese making workshops where you can make feta, camembert, brie. I'd, I'd love to really get into that and then pass on my knowledge to you guys. Might look into that. Doing what? Sorry, I wasn't. Uh, making feta cheese and camembert. There's classes out there. That yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're this. easy. Yeah. Um, I've, done, I've done the halloumi. Yeah. Um, we've done the ricotta. That's easy. Yeah. Feta is, about, I think, just about as easy. Really? Yeah, oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, you just yeah. need the you just need the time and the um yeah, not being interrupted. Like oh, tonight, okay. yeah. I'm by myself. I'm making the Cypriot raviolis. 
because I'm got, coming over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I got my hexagon tray from um, oh my gosh. the big shop. Yes. So I'm going to make it where it is. Uh, oh, that, that looks like a lot of fun. So you, are you going to make the, the fresh pasta? Yes. Well? Oh, no, there's nothing like fresh pasta. That's yeah. the idea of the whole thing. Um, and it doesn't take long to make the pasta. Yeah. And, um, it's more the rolling out because I'm going to use my um, pasta machine to roll it out. Mm. Um, but then the hexagon dray is bigger, so it's just working out um, uh, how big. I have to do some of it by hand, the third roll by hand. Mm. Um, and it's a matter of experiment. But if I've got someone over my shoulder watching me and asking me what I'm doing, it pisses me off. <laughs> Especially my husband who asks, tells me just, but we love ravioli. So, uh, yeah, you'll see it on my Facebook page once I've done that. I'm just trying to find the syrup for us to do the syrup. I'm just going to chop up some parsley. So this parsley is just a, a garnish for, for the dish. Um, being Portuguese, we'll probably use oregano rather than, than, than parsley. So you can use one or the other. Now, who said that when you have a Thermomix, you lose all your knife skills? You don't. No. <laughs> and actually chopping herbs like this for me is um, therapeutic. I love it. Uh, I usually have my big knife. I, I just remembered the syrup is just honey poured on top, right? Is that right? It's honey, yeah. This one's honey. Yeah, no, I was... <laughs> Do you want to do a sugar syrup? No, 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 no. No, honey's fine. I'm just going to, when you're talking about chopping, I was going to chop the pistachio nuts in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, can, we all know. So we've basically finished um, this part of the recipe. So, um, yeah. so here is proof that we don't lose our knife skills as a Thermomix user. <laughs> How often do you hear that, hey? They brand you as a lazy cook. So no. not true. Yeah. Let's see how that's going. They're cooking nicely. It does tell you to put icing sugar on it. Because um, I did, the, like I said, the cinnamon. And, mm. um, so this one, it's dust with icing sugar, garnished with chopped pistachios and drizzled with honey before serving. So, um, okay, that's actually going to be really good. That'll be yeah. done in about 10 minutes. So I'll go to the end of this recipe. Okay. I'm going to grab my Thermomix spatula. Does anyone have a question? Have a look. Love to learn about making halloumi. There we go. <laughs> well, we have to work out some future masterclasses. Maybe one of them would be cheese. Yeah, the halloumi actually, um, the cookie do one is pretty good. I've used, um, I don't know, I don't know a few of my customers have already um, uh, bought the Fay F A Y I Z book. Um, mm. Two girls, consultants, they were up in Queensland, have yeah. translated the recipe. So I used part of their recipe, but the cookie do recipe actually is very good um i think it even has pictures of showing you what you should actually be doing like um it takes a whole day but you're not on top of it all, all day like you like everything <laughs> and it's worth making it just to see what goes into making halloumi cheese now i want to show you something really cool what with the tm6 is that with some recipes you actually get videos <laughs> on the screen to show you how to do certain things. So this one is teaching us how to remove the simmering basket with your spatula. So you just press play and it shows you how I to do that. It. Isn't I it cool? It. I think eventually that will come with sound because the Thermomix obviously has sound. Um, so we may get some little video tutorials yeah. with sound in the future. There were, the yeah, because some of them, what was I cooking? Yeah. I was cooking something, um, a couple of weeks ago and they were showing really fast how to do what I was doing. Uh, it must have been a bread. I can't remember now. It was either a bread or something I was making and they were showing me how on there, how to fold it, but they were folding so fast it was a bread. Oh, yeah. And I had to keep rewinding it, but so that was the best part. I could rewind it and go back and do step by step. Yeah. Yeah. Can I make noise or are you right? Okay. 
Um, you can make noise, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry, that was two seconds. I'm gonna see if they're fine. Okay, so now that the next step of the recipe was to add in the feta cheese and just mix it through it. I actually like to sprinkle it on top. So I'm gonna get a tray. I don't want to use this one. I was gonna use that, but I'll be all right. So we're gonna pour that into this tray. I'm going to use, so I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to use a spatula and pour directly onto the spatula so you don't get splatter everywhere. See, there we go. Yum. And now we're just going to sprinkle with some feta. Yum. It smells to... good, everybody. There, go for it because it melts and makes the sauce thicker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> can never have too much cheese. Okay. But can I tell you, it's good clean cooking and we're not using as much oil as we normally do and actually yeah. we do it is healthy um I this is a very healthy dish yeah, yeah, because yeah. we haven't um we did add some olive oil i think it was like 40 grams but we cook it at such a low temperature that it hasn't um made you know uh, break up it doesn't yeah, yeah break up though yeah that turn but not only that thing. what i found since can I share a story? Yeah. Um, I'm 64, mind you. Um, I looked at my health records because um, our doctor retired and gave us our health records. If you see my health records in 93, my blood tests, compared to my blood tests now, um, one example, my cholesterol was 7 and it's now down to 3.7 and my bad triglycerides were 5, mm -hmm. but down to 1.2. And it's because yeah. when we're cooking on the cooktop, we're actually pouring and we pour a little bit more whereas here we're weighing it and it's telling us how much to put you might put keeps just, us in control yeah it? basically yeah. yeah yum sandra there we go so there is our prawn oh, i can't tip that hang on <laughs> thank you can see it hang on. um so yeah with some crusty bread this can be a main meal as well or or uh an entree um what i've done to turn this into like a big main, main meal is you just cook some pasta and you mix it through. Yep. Yum. Any kind of pasta, fresh pasta, rice. Rice. Yes. You Basmati can actually rice. Yeah. Or you can cook the rice in the sauce and then throw in the yep. the prawns as well. well. Yeah. You could. You could sauce in the bottom, rice in the simmering basket, and prawns in the varoma. In the varoma. There you go. You've got it already Late in cooking. twenty-five minutes. <laughs> Lots of yeah. half an hour. I'll there just chop go. these for one more second. Okay. That should be right. So we're done. We're we done. done. We're done. We're just going to take that oh, out of the oven. Yeah, we're going to take that out And we're going to decorate it. Okay. We'll just pull them back in. Oh, it is Whatever. Done. Yep, it's definitely done in that bread. That's looks fantastic. There we go. Oh, yeah, yes. crunchy on top. Because so yep. remember that custard was cooked, so you just yeah. want the brownness. The brownness, exactly. Okay, and do you want the honey? Honey? Yes, honey. <laughs> okay. I love working with Sandra. All right, so just drizzle. Yeah, just drizzle. Go for it. I don't know, do you like a lot of honey or a little bit of honey? Well, it'll melt, it'll, it'll turn into a home. syrup. Oh. Um, so yeah. this will really... Um, Got more? It's already, yeah, put some more, because what will happen, it'll go through and around and underneath. Well, so we'll just go around the okay, sides as do. well. <laughs> um, um, Chris isn't going to know this is bulgatsa, right? Because <laughs> he won't eat it. That's um, not bulgatsa. Do you want cinnamon? No, uh, no. No, oh, 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 oh. up to you. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna sprinkle cinnamon on the other one for sure. No, I'll tell yeah. him it's. A, it, I'll tell him it's just a, a, a cheesecake. <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell him it's bulgur. Uh... There we go. He eats anything. My husband. He's fantastic. Yeah, let me Spoiled. take a photo from here. Right. Of Helen in action. There we go. <laughs> you can decorate mine too. Do you want yours? Yeah. 
Oh, that looks awesome. Look, oh, shit. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it wasn't that hot. Oh my gosh, Helen, how are your fingers? Hey, I've been cooking for. You since got, I was 12. You've got asbestos hands. Yeah, I, I have, know. really. Yeah, there we go. We'll take a photo. And really, that thing you made that last night, that stayed crispy. Yeah, it does. I think it's, you know, it's the ghee. Yeah, that definitely. Yeah. I think. <sighs> That looks amazing. Isn't that fantastic? Look at that. Gee, good. <laughs> Who's going to make it? Oh, hang on. Actually, I should take a photo too. So cool. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We are done. So we'll we'll, we'll post these photos up on um, on our socials so you can have a look and also the the recipes. And um, if you have any questions, let me just see if there's any questions before we go. Thank you. They do look amazing, don't they? So let us know if you make it. Show us some photos. Post them on your socials. Give us a tag. Give us a... Sandra. Yes. When when you made it overnight, did you put it in the fridge overnight? I actually just left it on, on the counter. Oh, that's um, what I thought. Otherwise, it will get soft. I the, think... The pillow will the, get soft. Yeah, that, great. Uh, yeah, it does. And when I made mine, um, I left it out the first night but then after mm. that i put it in the yes fridge. it yeah. did soft yeah yeah, yeah. terrific I just, I just covered it with a tea towel yeah excellent yeah. thank you yeah, thanks it's great it's great done. presentation well thank done you. <laughs> see you guys yeah. bye have a great weekend everyone and join us next friday for our italian masterclass where we're making gnocchi oh i've got to watch that one yeah you can join us it'll be fun next. we're doing it here so oh, you're doing it here with yeah. tina yeah. oh good <laughs> tina and i are the oldest ones in the <laughs> all right thanks guys see thank you so much for joining we had fun bye bye Ooh. that looks so good <laughs> Let me see.